there's not many people out there I, I love, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, including family. <laughs> and uh, he's one of them that I, I love. I, I, and uh, so with that comes chaos. <laughs> I was a gay record executive. Keep in mind, I love heavy metal. I love the noise. I love the sweat. I love when I go to concerts, it's 99% guys there. And I kept looking at him, he had this sparkle in his eye, and curiosity abounded. So I gave him a job. This guy, Michael Olago, booked so many legendary shows in New York City. We were part of this worldwide new music thing that was happening. It was coming from England, it was coming from New York, it was coming from Australia. It was exciting. He was out to make it in the music business, and you knew it. As cute and as sweet and as friendly and as enthusiastic as he was, he was also pretty seriously aggressive. At some point, I'm ready to leave the Ritz, and uh, Jerry Brandt called Bob Krasnow at Electra Records, and the next thing you know, I got my first job as an a &R executive. And then all of a sudden, this important little cassette came across my desk. You know, there were parallels because, you know, Michael Alago was an outsider in a mainstream kind of environment. And we always considered ourselves to be outsiders in a sort of potentially, you know, mainstream environment. You could argue that we were perfect for each other, you know? It seemed like we had one song that he liked. And I don't even know if he liked the whole song. We had one riff of one song he would always talk about. And it seemed like he signed us just based on that. Literally, just based on that. At that point in time, being a young A&R person in the music business, uh, I just loved the energy. I could give a shit if a song was gonna get fucking played on the radio or anything. I just loved this noisy energy. Fantastic, you, you, you've got to be knowing that people that are completely themselves and at one with themselves are the easiest people in the world to get along with. And I think that that's, uh, that's how we work as, as friends because it is, there's no hidden agenda. Because when you're young and you're in a rock band and you go on the road for the first time and you've read Circus Magazine and all your, you know, all your heroes are drug addicts and alcoholics, and so you want to do that too. An addictive personality gene, I don't have it. You know, but some people do, they, they try a drug, they're nuts, that's it. When's this gonna stop? Or when's this guy gonna die? Where my life would take me? 